now to that urgent push for hostage and ceasefire negotiations in Gaza as we are monitoring the key talks that are happening today in Cairo. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Saudi Arabia calling Israel's proposal extraordinarily generous and that Hamas should accept it. President Joe Biden saying he also spoke with Benjamin Netanyahu over the weekend, telling the prime minister once again not to launch a ground offensive into Rafah, that crowded city in southern Gaza. And this all comes as Hamas released new video of an Israeli-American hostage who is still being held in the Gaza Strip. Our foreign correspondent Tom Supi Burge spoke with the hostage's brother. He joins us now from Israel, along with Elizabeth Schulze, who's there at the White House for us. Uh, so protests are ongoing. Uh, and and Tom, you are right there in the middle of them. Tell us what the scene is like there right now, and then we, of course, will talk about your interview. Yeah, Kira, this is Central Tel Aviv. That is the Ministry of Defense. And as you can see tonight in Tel Aviv, there are thousands of people who have taken to the streets. You can see the Israeli flags. You can see this gentleman's message there. It's pretty obvious for our audience to interpret that one. But the main message from this crowd, from many, many Israelis right now, is it is time to bring more hostages home. They want the Israeli government to prioritize the hostages. They want the, the government to make concessions. Now, the White House is saying, Kira, uh, while we speak, while this demonstration is ongoing, that there is a deal on the table, that there is a deal, a proposal in front of Hamas. The White House is saying it would mean a six-week ceasefire. A top British official, interestingly, is saying it would involve thousands of Palestinian prisoners being released from Israeli jails. And that maybe explains why Secretary of State Blinken has described the deal on offer to Hamas as extraordinarily generous. But look, this is the scene. There's a, a lot of anger. There is a growing movement and there is growing pressure on the streets in Israel, on the Israeli government, but there is also political pressure from within Netanyahu's government. Hardliners in his government are saying that he shouldn't accept what they deem to be a bad deal, but more moderate elements, Benny Gantz in the war cabinet, is saying the hostages, like this crowd think, should be prioritized at all costs. Kira. All right, Tom, I'll get back to you in a minute uh, about your conversation with the hostage's brother. But, Elizabeth, I'm just going to take it to you because Tom is mentioning the White House. Uh, what, what's the latest from there? What are you hearing? What can you add to what Tom just said? Well, you know, here we know that there is this deal on the table. A lot of what is the question is, has Israel done enough to continue the U.S. support and to continue to get this proposal forward. Here's what we're hearing today, Kira. Secretary of State Antony Blinken right now is in Saudi Arabia. He said Israel has taken concrete steps toward uh, what needs to be done to get more humanitarian aid. And he referred to the border crossings in northern Gaza. We know that there's going to be that floating pier that is expected to open in the middle of May. So right now, Secretary of Blinken says the only thing standing in the way of this deal be getting accepted between the people of Gaza and a ceasefire is Hamas. So they're trying to say that right now this is up to Hamas. That's the Sec Secretary of State on his trip right now. In addition to going to Saudi Arabia, Kira, he's also going to be traveling to Israel and to Jordan. So this is top of the list. The White House tells us the number one priority of that visit from the Secretary of State is trying to get that deal accepted. Got it. All right. Well, Tom, let me take it back to you, because very rarely do we get to uh, toss to you in the middle of protests like this. Um, tell us more about the protesters uh, behind you and also how it folds into the hostage's brother that you had a chance to talk to uh, and, and what exactly he told you. I know we have a part of that interview. I know this is all coming together from the ground to even sit down interviews that you're getting with with family members now. Yeah, well, look, we've seen a, a former top IDF commander in the crowd here. So it shows you, look, this is a diverse crowd. This is a cross-section of Israeli society. Uh, it is people who I think are broadly fed up with the status quo, that they say enough is enough. And yes, I spoke to the brother uh, last night of Keith Siegel, an, an American-Israeli hostage in uh, captivity in Gaza. And I spoke to David, uh, who's in Rochester, New York, and David said, look, this is a crucial moment. There are positive signs, but enough is enough. Let's have a listen. Do you believe that Prime Minister Netanyahu is willing to make enough compromises to, to get a deal? He is in the position to agree to a deal. And I'm asking, our whole family is asking him, begging him to come to terms with whatever the deal needs to be 
Well, that message from David Siegel is echoed by this crowd. There's a lot of noise here. But look, it's important to also reflect that the other key party in this is Hamas. And a senior Hamas official has said to ABC News today that the proposal on the table is, in their minds, positive, more positive than the deal that was potentially proposed weeks ago. But they did say to us that there are still issues that need to be negotiated. So, yes, the U.S. is driving this process. The Israeli government are key, but Hamas is key too. Kira? Tom Sufi-Burge there, right in the middle of it all. Our Elizabeth Schulze at the White House. Appreciate you both. Thank you.